Hello, it's time for an update. It's been a while. Uh, you probably by now saw a couple of videos that I posted about the radio uh, in this Jeep. This thing has got the wobbles, and take a look at this. This doesn't look right. Wow, that's bad. <laughs> that might be the reason why this thing wobbles so much. It could be that it needs ball joints. But uh, one of the things that people made a lot of mention about is this rod here. And if it's loose, then it's 90% 90, 90 of the people who have problems with this thing, it's the reason why. And it's got a, a nylock nut on the back of it. Interesting. But it seems to be pretty stiff. But uh, I'll have to take it off and see if oh, the bushings are any good on it. Because it could be that this whole thing needs to be replaced. And I've thought about doing that, but there's, if there's no reason to do it, I'm not going to. Uh, also, these, if they're loose or they're bent or the bushings are wore out in it, they need to be replaced too. And I thought about doing that, getting the adjustable ones. I don't like these fixed length ones at all. So I thought about doing that. And then the steering stabilizer is going to have to be replaced because... Uh, they, they still do work somewhat, but, uh, I can definitely tell it probably needs, to, and that's not going to solve the wobbling, of course, but ball joints, I think, are going to have to be replaced. I looked at the Carfax on this thing, and they were replaced about three years ago. I replaced the wheel hubs, and it made the wobbling worse, so it took a lot of the slack out that this thing has. But it steers a lot better than it used to, but it still don't steer right. I mean, this thing was pretty loose and hard to hard to control, especially going over crowns in the middle of the road. But uh, it doesn't have that problem nearly as badly, but it still does. And with the wheels being all out of whack, I'm sure it probably needs an alignment too. But you can definitely tell, oh, I can. I don't know about you because you're not driving it, but I can definitely tell that there is uh, the, the, these these tires are fighting for traction, and that's what's leading to the wobbling. Here's another problem I've noticed: this thing is loose. It's not even tight, and I think the bushings are probably wore out in it too. But uh, that's the only one that's loose that I've found so far. Uh, I've really not put a lot of money into it fixing what I could. Uh, I think about $600, but I've done it all myself. All the work that I've done on this to get it fixed, I've done all myself. The problem is, is I'm running out of time because I have a big trip to make, and I would like to take this on that big trip. And I'm not going to be able to do that if this thing is wobbling at 35 miles an hour. So I'm still only able to do 30 miles an hour. I haven't really been able to go on the interstate or anything at high speed because well for one it's not geared right for these 33 inch tires and it's certainly not going to make it any better when i put 35s on them and two because uh the transmission shifts by speed because the speedometer is off with these 33 inch tires on them the transmission just seems to not shift at the right place and so going down the highway doing 60 is a struggle when it was then that I could do 60 before it started this wobbling business and hitting bumps certainly. Oh, yes. Hitting bumps on the highway doing 60 in this thing and it wobbles like it does is not the safest. I didn't know what I was getting into, but this is a project that I can learn from. I've actually been having a blast working on it, except when it's this cold outside. Yeah, I got a piece of junk, but uh, it's something that I can learn from. Helps me greatly when I need to work on something like this, because I'll be driving these. Because I really do like them, but I, I need to learn how to work on them. Because there's really no reason to have somebody else do it when I can do it myself, especially with hand tools. And that's all I've ever used on this thing is just simple hand tools. I haven't even had to break out the impact wrench or any special tools yet and that's kind of the reason why i got this thing was um, most everything can be fixed with simple hand tools you really can't do that on a modern car today
And that goes without saying that this thing is full of electronics. This, okay, well, I'll show you something. Now, this is a supplement to the video that I uploaded about the car radio, but listen to this. The CD player makes noises when I open the door. Why? I have no idea. It's more of the CAN bus goodness, I think. So whenever the light comes on, the CD player makes noise. I don't know if it's ejecting a disc or putting the disc back in or if it's some kind of feature with this weird radio. So I've picked up some uh, engineering duties and this one is at the college radio station 88.5 WVCP where I also do a show on Saturday playing all 80s music from 7 to 9 central. Uh, we have HD2 and an HD1. I wonder what would happen if I actually touched that. Oh wow, it changes it. So I've been busy for so long that I failed to find out why the HD2 wasn't working. So it's been off for a while, several months at least. I'll have to check my logs to find out when it was the last time I found HD working on the radio at all. But I noticed that it had been off and uh, we were so busy trying to do things. Plus I'm a college student full time as well. So I, it wasn't really a big priority for me. And looking at the statistics of the people listening on the stream, uh, I don't think anybody would even listen to it, to be honest with you. But uh, it was something that we needed to work on, and we decided to go over there and find out what it was that was wrong with it. So I guess I'm picking up uh, the HD as well. So at first I was uh, kind of working on a few things, adjusting preamps on the console, and then somehow I adopted the streaming encoder computer. And now I've adopted a few other things. So it looks like I'm doing a lot more than I ever have. And, and the new chief operator is letting me do all of it because I kind of know how all this stuff works. So this is my first foray into digital HD radio. Uh, I've never even worked on a radio station with HD radio, so this is uh, new to me, and it's a learning experience. Driving home one day, I noticed that this thing is making a lot of noise, and I kind of figured I knew what it was, but I really didn't have an opportunity to find out what it really was. The traffic here is absolutely abysmal. It takes forever to get anywhere. A 20 minute drive takes about an hour, hour and 15 minutes, uh, because there's so many people here that it does take a long time to move someplace. And everybody drives like 20 miles an hour, <laughs> which is why I'm able to get away with driving the Jeep at 35 miles an hour and no faster because nobody even goes that fast here. Everybody's a slow poke. So I finally get this thing home and I go ahead and test, start testing some of my theories about what that noise could be. And the first thing I did was hypothesize that the CV joint was going bad in the front drive shaft. So I put it in a four wheel drive and started driving it. And yes, that was what's making the noise. So I figured, okay, well, I can't replace the CV joint in this thing yet because I don't have a, a lot of money and I don't really feel like having to go through that all over again. So let's just take the drive shaft out until I get some more money saved up. That way I can do a couple of things at once instead of it having to piecemeal this all together over the course of the next several months. So I went ahead and took the drive shaft out, as you can see here. Now, I wasn't really prepared for this, but there is no rubber boot on that CV joint at all. <laughs> there is nothing. It's exposed to the weather. The grease is dry, if it has any at all. And that's what was making the noise. But what I didn't realize is that the slip yoke boot had been either cut or failed and caused the portion of the slip yoke and the drive shaft to be exposed to weather and rain and dirt and grime. And it seized up. So it wasn't able to move very much if it was at all. So it's a good thing I did take it out because this thing is completely hashed. 
And these are not serviceable drive shafts, so once they're done, they're done. Uh, I probably could take that apart, but you know how hard that's going to be to try to remove that seized yoke? So I'm just saying, eh, you know, it's $200 for, this, for the kit to replace that CV joint that comes with Loctite for the front drive shaft or the front U-joints to go into the uh, differential. And then I still got to figure out a way to fix this if I can or if it's able to be fixed. So it would be a lot better, actually, just to go ahead and replace the whole thing, which I can for about $500. And it will last a lot longer than this thing will. And it will work a lot better too. So that's probably the route that I'm going is just to replace that drive shaft with one that's got uh, universals on both ends instead of that CB joint, which I'm not really a big fan of. Fall State College Radio, 88.5 FM, WVCP. That is your homeboys. It shall serve no fries for their time. Tune in to vallstate.edu forward slash WVCP. All right, this one's on you, dude. We'll end on this. I have seriously considered getting a electronic drum kit, but there's no point in getting one if I can't even play this one, the one that I have now. My biggest issue is I have gotten way too busy and I don't have time to play it. So I need to be dropping some of the things that I've been doing so I can spend more time doing this. And I'm not, in sh I'm not really sure how I'm going to do that. Uh, Full-time job that I have pretty much is going to stay that way. I can't work any fewer hours than I'm already working or else I lose my insurance. And I also have a lot of more deductions now because I belong to a quasi-union. So there's that. And I have the dues to pay every month, that sort of thing. Now I get duties at the radio station. I have full-time classes. I really am trying to figure out when I'm supposed to come up here and play this thing, considering that I bought a new drum throne for it for $300. So, yeah, I'd like to come over here and play it. I did fix my snare drum issue, so it doesn't buzz nearly as bad. I still have to work on it, but it doesn't buzz anymore. Needs a little bit more tuning, but uh, it's playable right now. I, I really do like playing acoustic kits a lot better than I play, like playing the electronic ones, but there is a, an electronic one that Roland makes that's several thousand dollars that seems to be pretty nice. And as long as it holds up a lot better than the one that I had, uh, it could be a pretty serious contender allowing me to come up here you know, whenever I do have time to come up here and make a lot of noise, which I don't. Uh, to come up here at even 10 o'clock at night before I go to bed and come up here and, and do some practicing. And the only thing I really need is to put some headphones on. So I would really like to go to a place where I can audition one before I buy one because they are not very cheap. And I'll probably sell this thing because eventually I will be moving into an apartment again, not that I really want to. And I can't play an acoustic kit in an apartment. So I need to get an electronic kit that's really worth a damn. So at least I have something to play. As much as I don't really want to do that, and as much as I enjoy playing an acoustic kit and much rather like to play one, uh, sometimes some things just can't be dealt with. Hello? You won't find this kind of variety on just any radio station. You don't say. Stay with Ball State College Radio, 88.5. You don't say. Stream us 24-7 at WVCP.net. Uh, uh, who was it? He didn't say. So I got a lot more stuff from the radio station to show you. I, I've been pretty busy, but uh, not busy enough to take the phone camera along with me and recording some videos of the install of the Angry Audio Audio Chameleon C4 audio processors. And I'll show you what's involved in that. That'll be coming up in a video. Uh, obviously some more stuff with the Jeep. But, uh, and then the big trip. Oh yes, I got a big trip. I already told you about that. And uh, I'll uh, let you know when that's gonna be. Probably won't be until the first of next year. But I'll need to get the Jeep drivable 
so you can go more than 30 miles an hour. And that's pretty important when I'm driving over a large body of water and into a tunnel. Hint, hint. So I'll see you again soon. See ya.